Hello and good, good, good morning, I should say. And uh, thank you very much for joining us today. And um, we'll get started. Um, thanks so much for joining me on this uh, webinar on creating a successful onboarding process. My name is Amy Andrews. I am the business resourcing partner here at JGP. Um, and we're here to talk about how a great onboarding process can improve your retention by 82%. Um, and having a robust onboarding process can keep engagement within your new starters as 20% of new hires uh, leave organizations within the 12, um, first 12 months, costing a business on average about £1,000 and about 11 um, weeks of productivity. So thank you much for, for joining me. Um, there is a question and answer section on the, the webinar. If you want to pop any questions into that uh, chat, then please do on the Q&A and I'll get them at the end of the, the webinar. Um, so in a time where candidates are short, it's imperative that we try and keep the candidates who are working for us and the people who are doing well. And people don't always want to, to leave their posts. Uh, they're normally very happy in, in their work. But obviously, onboarding a new person spends a lot of time um, and effort in, in the process. So let's talk about why we onboard. So why is it important to create a successful onboarding process? Well, nearly four out of five candidates say the overall candidate experience they receive is an indicator of that business and that person um, as an organisation. And onboarding is about laying the plans for the future and making the individual feel a part of your business from as soon as the starting process. Um, and there's benefits for not only the, the organization, um, but also the candidate as well. So if we talk about candidate benefits, it's obviously a candidate journey. You expect all of your candidates to have a really good onboarding process. It enables someone to settle in quite quickly to their job, to get them up to speed as soon as possible. Um, and also it ensures that they feel valued. It can be very daunting um, starting a new business. Um, I'm sure we've all done it on this, on this program today. Um, and it feels quite nerving. It's, it's a little bit apprehensive. Anybody who says that they're not nervous on their first day, I don't believe them. Um, um, because you wanna make, you wanna do a good job and you wanna have um, some value from day one. And also make someone become a productive. Um, it gets them up to speed. It gets them knowing where the, all the information is, knowing where they need to go to, through, to for information. And also it understands your culture and your values. They want to be part of your business because they, they echo the same values as, as they, their own personal values. So it's important that throughout the journey, we do um, look at candidate benefits. And also as an organization, it saves time and money. Um, there is a huge public sector skill shortage, sort, shortage, I apologize. So it's important that we do retain good people. Um, recruiting takes time. Um, how many posts do you have in vacant in your current organization um, that you have and how long have those posts been open? Um, on average, it costs an organization about £3,000 to make a hire. Now, could that money be spent elsewhere? Is a question you wanna, we wanna look at. Um, it also improves attention. People who tend to have a successful onboarding process, they tend to stay longer. They tend to stay an average of three years tenure within an organization. Um, and obviously people who don't feel engaged within your business, there is an enhanced um, sickness rate. So this reduces ab absenteeism. Um, within moral and brand, um, nearly 60% of job seekers have had poor counter experiences as a job seeker, and 72% of those who shared their experience online on sites such as Glassdoor and LinkedIn. So having engaged employees who share positive experiences will have a positive impact on your organization. And also it can refer candidates to your business as well, which sometimes is a good understanding, a good gauge of how, how well your business is working. Um, and also 80 to 90% of talent say that a positive or negative candidate experience can change their mind about a role in a company. Um, so it's really important that we do look at the onboarding process as a whole, and today we'll be giving you a few tips, some you will already know and will be well embedded in your onboarding process, but some it might be new, it might be new idea, so hopefully you'll have something um, of value coming to this webinar today. So let's start at the beginning. So before they start, so, so when should we start the onboarding process? 
The process shouldn't start on their first day. It should be done well before um, they are due to start virtually or in person. Um, it should start as soon as the candidate has an offer. Usually a candidate will have a notice period. This could be a month, three months or six months. So it's really important that we get the process started early so that you're able to be organised from day one. As hiring managers or human resource professionals, we shouldn't let the excitement of the interview and offer stage disappear quickly. The candidate is already engaged within the business, so let's keep it that way and let's start the journey as soon as possible. So they've accepted. Fantastic. You've got this far. You've hired your perfect candidate and um, person is on board and looking to start. So it's time to make a really good impression. Now, I've seen throughout my career of many organizations losing top candidates because they fall down at the first hurdle. Um, so it's a really important stage to get right. It's really valuable to a business to um, be organized and be prepared for that candidate to start. Now, usually uh, compliance processes can take a, a lot of time. Um, they can, uh, if a role needs a DBS check or security clearance or five years referencing, then processes can take a little bit longer than roles that don't need those levels of checks. So by outlining your process from the outset on what information you will need from a candidate, we'll make it clear from what they provide. Um, so if it's right to work documents, if it's referencing, a lot of that information can be taken um, quite quickly, but also make sure that throughout the process that we don't change the goalposts. Um, we've had instances in the past where candidates have, have been disengaged because requirements have changed, vetting has changed, and it's really an important process that we need to, to look at. So I would suggest that if you're looking at sending out your processes, if a lot of them are already um, electronic, which is good because it means they can be automated, they can send out notifications, they can set reminders, and they can give that some form of engagement with that candidate to say, right, this is what you need, this is what we're waiting for, and it shows a whole timeline of the process. And also stay connected with them. If a process is taking a while, for example, a DBS check or clearance is taking a, a while, update them. Don't be afraid to have that conversation. Open communication is the key. Um, and we have found um, that candidates who have that communication with their new employer really does help include that person into that business. And if there is a reference you're struggling with, speak to the candidate and they can chase that person up. Or it could be the case that a DBS check take DBS check take DBS check is taking a little bit longer than expected. Have that communication. Um, I once had a candidate who had a DBS process. It was taking a long time. Um, it was stuck in one of the stages for forever and the candidate didn't hear anything from the organization and thought they weren't interested anymore and sadly got a new job um, and the organization didn't know until they contacted them to say that the dbs was was out and available and that they would be clear to start sadly by that point the candidate had then not heard anything and found another role um, so it is really important that we do keep open communications with our candidates, especially if they've got a long notice period, because you don't want to be three months down the line and haven't had a conversation with that candidate. Um, can they meet the team before they start? Are there any events or any meetings that they can attend? Um, they'll probably be nervous about starting a new job um, and getting involved is, is a great way to show them what the day job will be like. It also means they can meet the team. Um, when you've got forged teams within businesses who have worked together for many years and then you join someone new into that team, people can be scared, people can be nervous. So it's really important that they have a friendly, open uh, conversation. So get them involved with a, a board meeting or a, a company or team meeting if they can. If they're virtual, it'd be very easy for a candidate to log in, see some faces that they, they don't already know and have a little bit of rapport with that group before they start. It's a really good tool um, to get people engaged, especially if they're on a, a longer notice period. Um, in the world we work in, technology is so, so important. We've obviously got technology here. You've joined me today virtually, um, which is fantastic. And who would have thought a, a few years ago that we'd be in this position, but we are. Um, it's really disheartening when you start your first day in your first job, whether it be virtual or in, in the office, to not have any equipment. And believe me, that has happened to me before. Um, I've started a job and I've had no equipment, didn't know what I was doing, but 
it's really important that we get things like logins created. Uh, is there any, any equipment that they need? Phones, laptops, keys, passcodes, logins. It's really important to get those equi that equipment as, as soon as possible because there can be delays. Um, and also, you'd be the IT's worst nightmare if you then, the night before someone was due to start, expect someone to, to give you a laptop and have equipment be ready, ready available. It seems something really silly and something that we should all do, but it has been cases where people haven't been prepared. So take this time when at office stage to start getting the, the ball in, in motion and start getting organisations um, and get the preparations done early because candidates will thank you for it in the end and also so will your IT departments. Um, also, with, um, with working remotely, um, it can be a little bit daunting because they won't know anybody. Um, we've seen quite a number of clients recently have done welcome videos, whether it be their team or the leader of that business to put a, a five or two minute video about what the business is like, what they expect of them, what their values are. And it just gives a little bit of an introduction to someone who hasn't joined that business before. They haven't worked for the organization and they really do want to be part of a fantastic um, public sector business. So it's really important that these little things, if they're not going to be in on site from day one, to have something where they know and they can see people within that business. Um, and also um, mentoring. Do you have a, a mentoring program? Is there something that you have a, a work buddy? Um, I know previously in, in, in my roles, we've often had mentors or buddies no matter what level you're at starting in a business, you want to have someone you can contact with, someone you can ask where certain things are or ask for information. So it's a really good key. It can be somebody who um, is of their level. It can be someone higher if they're a junior candidate. It can some be within another department or someone who can be part of that person's journey and that candidate journey to give them tips and advice. And um, because you want that person to feel welcome in the business and also um, have someone to, to contact with and have uh, some conversations with and some support. Um, and also on the perspective of being asked to be a mentor, it obviously improves engagement for that individual who's asked to be a mentor because it shows them that they're doing a really good job, they're part of the team um, and they could be a really, really good asset to this new starter starting. So first day, so no matter what your level at, what, what, what your level at or what your job is, nerves will be there, like I said, because a candidate really wants to do well and prove themselves to the business. Um, so it's really important to keep up the momentum on onboarding. Um, lots of organisations that I've worked with only start their onboarding on from first day. Um, some decide to do onboarding like I've just said before the before the, they start. But obviously, let's look now to a candidate's first day. So they'll be expecting a warm welcome. Um, they're brand new to the business, whether they be virtual or face-to-face. -face. Um, a lot of candidates are still recruiting on uh, virtual jobs. So it's very important that we do have a warm welcome if you're gonna be onboarding someone virtually, but also, if they are gonna be starting in your office on your day, make sure people are gonna be in the office. Um, so check your diary, asking to someone to start when you're back from leave or when your day is consumed with meetings will not set a good impression. So make sure that your diary is clear and that you're available for that person. Um, first things first, really, um, show them to their desk, introduce them to the team. It sounds very um, easy and, and, and something that we would do naturally. However, I have had candidates in the past who have sat there until lunchtime and don't know where the kitchen is or where the exits are. So you need to really give them some practical information on this. So things like fire exits, health and safety, perhaps you could ask one of your team to give them the guided tour. There'll be so much information for them to take in. They probably won't remember everybody's names, um, but they will, I'm sure, remember a friendly, warm welcome and some people's faces that they will recognise on their, their first day. Um, now, you'll already have formed some form of bond with them because you've interviewed them, you've got to know them a little bit. So you want to keep on that get to know you basis. You want to um, find out a little bit more about them because day one is not normally straight into your job. It's about being in, inducted into this organisation. Um, so 
So have a good chat with them. Um, ask them, why did they decide to join your business? Why did they, why out of all of the jobs they'd applied for, they'd interviewed or with or had offers, why did they come to you? Because that's a really good talking point to have a conversation um, with somebody about their, their experience. Um, and also uh, team lunches, they're a great way to take the pressure off from the first day nerves by having a team lunch. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It could just be a coffee, anything less formal away from the normal working environment so that you can find out um, a little bit more about them. And obviously you want to find out why they've, they've joined your business because you, you're always asking for feedback. Um, feedback is very important in the onboarding process. Um, it allows you to make changes, it allows for you to get people's feedback on their experiences so that you can tailor your process and make sure that moving forward, you're doing the best for the, the new hires that you'll bring into your business. Um, and like I said, work buddies, any mentors, um, makes people feel valued from one day, it makes them feel part of the team. Um, and also it will benefit your mentor, like I said, um, with helping with their own engagement. Um, there's going to be a lot for them to take in. New business, new faces, new systems. It could be a brand new job, brand new career for them. Um, it could be someone who's done this job a million times before. Um, but obviously, it's a new business. It's going to be very, very different to what they've been used to. So there's going to be lots of information for them to take in. Um, what they will want to know is a first week agenda. They want to know what their expectations are in that first week and what they, they need to do and what is the plan. So obviously set that out on the first day and just give them an, an idea of what they're going to be doing. Um, a welcome pack. Now, some organisations uh, use welcome packs as part of their uh, sending their contracts and sending some merchandise. We obviously love all love a little bit of free merchandise. When I joined JGP, I got a lovely jumper and a notebook, which I carry around with me all of the time. So it's really important that if you do have the, the budget to spend a little bit of money on merchandise, or it could be just their key card, it could be a welcome card signed by the team, it could be anything to make them feel included and make them feel welcome in your, on your business. Um, and it could have things like their lanyard in it, it could have their, their, their key card, their, their locker key if they have some form of locker or anything like that just to make them part of the, the building. Um, and also make time. Us as managers and professionals, we are very busy. We, are, we live in the public sector world. We have lots of meetings, different things going on. But also, if someone is starting your business, you want to be there. You want to be approachable. So please do make sure that your diary is cleared for at least the first couple of days just to be part of that person's onboarding because they will thank you for it. And it starts building a really, really good relationship with that candidate. So onboarding isn't just a one day thing. It's important that this continues it's as it takes a candidate at least eight to 12 months to become efficient as, as efficient as their colleagues. So use this week as their induction. Um, give them all the information. They won't be expected. And I'm sure there will be no pressure within your organizations to have someone up and running from, from day one because it would be impossible and it would lay on a lot of pressure to a, a candidate and your new hire to, um, to start something really important. So let's look at the first week. So like I've mentioned, there is a lot of learning um, in your first week. So it's important really to exchange expectations. This is something I do quite a lot with my team um, and especially for, for new hires because they will want, they will have certain expectations of you and you will obviously will have certain expectations of them. So it's really important to share that from day one because it also gives you a dialogue, um, gives you some um, conversation handlers and, and things to look at as a manager and also gets them to understand you a little bit better because they, they're new to the business and new to the organisation. Um, so it's really important that you start having these conversations early. Um, if they haven't already had a chance to meet all of the team, then this should be the perfect time in their first week to sit down with everybody, get to know people as soon as possible. Um, and also, it can be daunting starting a new job. So having the time and having the, the, the communication with your new hires really is they're the heart of your business. So you wanna make sure that they, you can have facilitate some time. I know when I've started my previous job, I was introduced to many different people. 
within the business. And I spent the first week literally getting to know what departments do, who does what, who would I need to speak to in the case of certain issues if they ever appeared, if I had certain issues with my uh, ATS system or something, who would I need to contact with? So it's really important that they know who these people are. And also, where they, they need to find knowledge, I'm sure all of your organisations and your public sector business have intranets, giving them access to the intranet where they can find um, tick sheets on how to use systems. It could be as simple as an A to Z of a directory of where they who they call when they need to, but giving them access to that knowledge is, is really important. Um, and also systems training, if they are going to be using a new system, if they've converted from using Macs to Microsoft Office or using um, a certain system from Core HR to something else, book in some specific training time for, for, that, for that week. Um, and it's really important that the, those training sessions are run um, really efficiently, really smartly to actually get the most out of that session. Because like I said, knowledge is um, can be success. And it's really important that you need to give your, your employees the tools that they need to, to have the, to be able to do the, the job that they have. And also, we've got a duty of care. Um, as managers, well-being and duty of care should be at the forefront of our, our minds. Um, and starting a new job can trigger a, a complex uh, mix of emotions. So advising people of any employee assistance programs or asking them to get involved with any wellness programs you're running is really important. Uh, people need to know where they, they can go to if they have an, an issue. And it's our responsibilities as managers and, and professionals and people professionals to actually support their needs. Um, so do provide them with as much information as they, they can for those safe spaces and, and well-being. I'm sure you have got mental health um, professionals within your business, so I see signpost them if there's any an, an urgent need within that, that area. So the first month uh, you already got there, they should be well on the way to being onboarded by this point. 50% um, of people do depart their business within uh, 120 days if they don't have an un a structured onboarding process. And most organizations only focus on the first week of onboarding. So it's really, really important to look past the first week and move on to the first month of onboarding. Um, like I said before, it takes at least eight to 12 months for an employee or a new hire to be as successful as their colleagues and, and have the knowledge within that. So it's really important that we do carry on this process. Um, now, your new employee will want to know what their goals and objectives are. So set these together, Arrange, uh, arrange regular one to ones with them so that they can that so that you can praise or deal with any of their concerns. Um, building relationships is really important and having the trust is, is earned within a business. And from a manager to a friend to a colleague, you've got to have that, that trust and that built, that built in and trust within that business. So it's really important that you do have regular check-ins with your employees, um, no matter what level they, that they are, are in. Um, and set these, these objectives smartly um, and together so within their regular one-to-one -one so that you can praise, like I said, or raise or deal with any concerns. Um, now, Having a regular check-in is really important. Make sure you clear your diary, make sure you stick to the attendance. There's, there's been many times though where I have booked in one-to-ones and then something has come up and, and I've had to rearrange it, but do really try to, to stick to your regular check-ins um, because it is really important. It sends some structure to that candidate. Um, and also 30-day uh, check-in surveys. Now, as I've mentioned previously and, and earlier in the, the webinar, um, asking for feedback from, from your new hire was really important to, to iron out the process. Um, processes, yes, you will have certain boxes that you have to tick within your compliance measures, but it should really be tailored to an individual person depending what their level are and depending what their needs are. Um, somebody new to, your, to uh, an organization, would not necessarily, if they haven't got much work experience or they're new to the sector, would obviously need a lot more coaching than somebody who has been in the sector for, for many times. But it's really important, no matter who that person is or that level, that you do continue the onboarding process but part of it. So yeah, do put in a check-in survey, can be done uh, electronically, it could be done one-to-one, -one. you could do it, it could be set by your HR, um, it could just be done through a, a survey portal. Um, but it is really good important to, to ask that feedback so you can improve on your processes. Um, and also, um, 
it makes them feel included and it gets them involved within other aspects of the business. Um, when you're looking at involving people, they will have spent their first couple of weeks getting to know their immediate team um, and probably some other organisations within their business, whether it be payroll, it could be uh, HR, it could be uh, facilities, whatever other departments that they need to, to link in with. They should have already met these people um, and be part of a, a welcome team for um, involving them into different aspects of the business. Um, and share successes. They may not have um, done something amazing within their first, first month, but if they have done something fantastic or you've had a really good um, review from a, 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 a customer, um, one of your residents for it, perhaps, it's really important to, to share success. You will already be having regular team meetings, I'm sure. Um, so sharing successes is, is really important because it makes someone feel valued. It makes someone feel that they're doing a really good job and that, because when they start working for you, they really want to be part of a really good business and really do a good job. So if you're you're, you're praising them and giving them um, success stories that you can share with the rest of the business, that, that's really good. Um, many organizations within um, the recruitment industry, for example, could give out a, an award for uh, a best performing, or it, it could be something that a, a, a new starter has done something fantastic within the first couple of weeks. So it's really important that we do share that success to make them feel part of the family. Um, and also make time. It, like I've mentioned, and I will continue to mention about making time, it's really important. As someone who has gone through the process of starting a new job, it can be really daunting and people who forge relationships because they've been in a business for many time, it can be really hard and really um, difficult to be part of that, that business. So it's really important that you are there as a manager and, and a professional within their business to actually take stock and say, right, I'm going to spend out half an hour of my day. Let's have a catch up. Let's grab a coffee. Let's talk about how what's what's happening within your remit, because we're all busy and people who run large teams don't always have time. But it's important that we make time for questions because there is no silly question in the world of work. If you don't know, you don't know. Um, and if we haven't told them what the answer is, then how will we expect them to do to do a good job? Now, Now, moving on to beyond 60 days. Now, onboarding, as I've said, is an ongoing process. And although the process should have their formalities in the early days, it's impo important excuse me, to tailor further onboarding methods depending on the person, which gives them a much more tailored approach and, and more rewarding for an employee. You don't want to be on a conveyor belt of new starters coming in. You want to be feel valued from day one. And many reasons why people stay within businesses for so long is because of the people that they work with. So it's really important that the approach that you take does have more um, reward focus to enable that person to, to, to stick around for at least three years, because that's that's what the onboarding process should be doing for you. So beyond six, beyond 60 days now. You will have already um, set objectives. They would have already been, been dealt with. Um, but employees, I'm sure that you know, will make up their minds within the first 10 days. Um, and having a strong onboarding process, they should already be committed by this point. So by 60 days, they should have already made up their mind that you are, the, you are a keeper. They have probably kissed a few frogs to get to where they are now. Um, and it's all about collaborating. So by this point, they should be collaborating with others in the business and be proficient in their work. However, it is really important to continue to offer support receiving good feedback to strengthen the process, not just feedback from you as their manager to give to the individual, but also it should be about them having the um, direct route to you to having conversations and open conversations about processes. It could be by this point that they've been engulfed with setting the new process. It's really important that you take that information on board and that you do have time to, to listen. Um, because by someone having um, being in this business this length of time will have um, what well, they should be working independently. Um, so really, if they do ask for help, it's important that you continue to offer to offer support. Um, now, unfortunately, most candidates, if they haven't had a really strong onboarding process and there's been no structure to the onboarding process um, due to lack of communication. Um, so regular catch ups are important. 
as it can foster employees having a direct voice. And if the process hasn't gone smoothly, excuse me, leaders will be able to make adjustments and provide better support. Now, only 37% of companies ensure their onboarding programs run for more than a month. And with the difficulties that come with re-recruiting, it's something that we should all take responsibility for. So thank you very much for listening um, and listening to me harp on for half an hour. I will open the floor to any Q&As. So if anybody has got any questions that they'd like to ask, then please do ask now. Um, and I'd love to share some experiences with you or answer some questions that haven't been clear in the presentation. Um, thank you very much for your question. So what questions should we use on an onboarding survey? So that's a really, really good question. Um, and it really depends on the business that you work in. However, it could be something like what could have made your first day better? Um, who did you meet on your first day? Um, were you given a clear understanding of your expectations of your job? Um, it could include, were you given all the resources that you needed to um, provide your job effectively? Um, it could also um, ask about training, how they found the training process, if there was any specific training that they had. Um, and also it can give us um, access to information whether they've had experiences before. So things like access to um, company policies, organizational chart, uh, it could be dress code. Um, do they know um, any other areas of, of, of business? So it's, it's, good, it's a good question to ask. Hi, Alexandra. So what sort of feedback questions would you ask in the 30 day check in? So similar to what I've just said, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so we do check ins after 30 days with HR managers for well-being. Um, yes, yeah, so that's really good. That's a really good um, answer to that question, Alexandra. So things like um, does your job match your expectations or any issues? Yeah, it's really important to do that. And HR can be part of that conversation or managers because as a manager, you want to try and, and get as much information from your team as possible. So it is really important that we do ask those questions, ask for feedback. I do it all the time with my team. What could I have done differently, um, especially with their, um, their quarterly one-to-ones where you ask those questions? Hopefully that's answered your question, Alexandra. So things like, um, is your company um, what you expected? Were you given access to all the information? What could have we done of better? So Alexandra's also said, um, I find it difficult to engage with managers on the onboarding process, mostly due to time limitations. That's one of the, 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 the things in, in, in onboarding someone is having the time, um, prioritising, putting things into your diary to make sure that you've got time to do it. A lot of our processes are, are automated, so they do send out regular service, so it alleviates the pressures of someone actually having to do that. Um, so it's it's all about prioritizing, putting things in the diary. If you've got a number of starting starters happening at the same time, then the onboarding process should be at the similar levels. Um, so you can use those processes to actually do it in, in, in bulk, but it is about a manager also taking time. Um, Kyra, hello. Um, I work in HR and we do have recruitment processes. What is HR's responsibility after the new, new starter starts? <laughs> Um, I think it's, it depends on the size of the organisation. Some businesses are, are, are rather vast and HR, as I'm sure you all are, are, are pushed to the, 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 the limit. Um, it's, it's about ensuring that your man, through your management processes, and I'm sure your managers all have, have responsibilities up the chain. So as a HR, a HR process, it's about ensuring that these people have the tools that they need. And, and it could be the case that if there's problems further down the line because of managers, managers could be need to be retrained. So onboarding and learning a new job, um, sometimes it's 80% down to the individual and 20% down to the business because that candidate wants to, to, to do a good job. So I'd say HR's responsibility to deal with any issues, but really it should be depending on the size of the organization could be down to that manager but also down to that employee to make sure that they are asking the right questions if they haven't been given the information that they they have hopefully that answers your question um are there any tools or techniques that you can recommend <coughs> for engaging new starters remotely um there's lots of different things i think videos <coughs> excuse me i'm losing my voice here so 
things like um, having access to information on your internet is really important. Um, meeting people virtually, like I said before, doing a welcome video is re something really, really important. Um, I have previously been involved in different meetings, virtually meeting different members of the team where, uh, uh, within a small business. So I think you've got to ask that candidate to take some responsibility of their own onboarding and actually get them in front of them, the business. You can't do everything for everybody, um, but it's really important that you facilitate and give them the time to actually have virtual coffees. We run things like coffee mornings. Um, we do certain fitness tasks within our business, and it's all to do with well-being, which is a, a, a talking point of a, another webinar we're going to be doing in the future. Um, so it's it's really important that we do have um, the facility facility to make sure that we're doing the in the right way. Uh, we have you manage with some automation so, so could try more of this, but it's difficult to get managers to engage. So most of it falls to HR. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, this is really this is a really um, difficult situation because if a manager isn't doing what they should be, and as I, as as a manager myself, it's really important that my team do fit in from day one and, and get access to all the information um it's it's sometimes you have to address it with the managers if there is a um a, a reoff offending group of managers who aren't on board with the process it could be as simple as they don't know the process so rerun the process with them if it's the case that they just aren't engaging with the process because they they, they they're too busy in their day job then it really it should fall on them that you, we should be giving them feedback and saying, well, actually, you're losing people because of this. And we're educating our managers. Um, but it's having those conversations with those people to say, actually, we are a two man team. We've got lots going on. You keep recruiting. We're trying our best to keep our staff. Please be part of the conversation and have that direct conversation with them and open the floor and ask them why they're struggling within the, with the processes, because for two people to manage a whole um, function is, is very, it's very hard, um, but it's having that conversations with your managers. Hopefully that's helped. Um, someone's mentioned here about buddies and the onboarding process. Um, well, they, a buddy is someone to support someone, whether it be a buddy or a mentor. So I think if you have a buddy who is the go-to person, you need to not use the same go-to person. Um, I'm sure within every business, there's one person who knows everything because they've been here a number of years. So it's really important that they, you don't use the same person. It could be the case that you, you buddy people up with someone in their team. It could just be for a week. It just could be just due to getting the induction process. Um, and also if a buddy isn't there to be a manager, they're supposed to advise them if they have a question that they don't want to ask their manager, or it could be a personal issue, or it could be something about um, dealing with a certain issue, then you'd obviously escalate it with the manager. But I think buddies are very useful, like you say. Um, but if a buddy is struggling and taking up too much time, then that's when they refer to the manager and say, actually, look, this person needs extra training, extra support. And again, having those open communication channels to, to facilitate that is really important. Hopefully that, that answers your question. Um, our staff handbook outdated. We still have one, but never sure to include it. Definitely. As long as your processes within your handbook are current um, and weren't issued, for example, pre-COVID and the rules and regulations have changed and your process is a bit very different, then yes, definitely still use them. Um, handbooks are a really good tool. Like I mentioned previously, um, when I talked about um, having a information hub, yes, have that information on there, policies, procedures, grievance policies, well-being processes, all of that should be included. So definitely, if it's going to be part of your welcome pack, then please do include it as long as your information are, is up to date, which is, is the, the, the key, because data is only inform is, is as good as the, the data that you, you've updated it with, which is the same with any database. So yeah, so, so yeah they, they aren't outdated. I would still use them because it's a point of reference, um, but also make sure that they, they are um, updated. Um, well, thank you very much. I think that's the end of the questions. Um, thank you so much for, for joining me today. I hope you found it useful. Um, I hope you have enjoyed the session. Um, and thank you very much for listening. And um, we look forward to working with you in the future and speaking to you soon. Take care. Thanks very much now. Bye.